Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to install and set up the PlayStation 3 emulator on PC. What's cool about the emulator is you can play PS3 games in 4K, you can sort of upscale and do a bunch of other cool stuff, as well as you can even play online. Though there is some limitations to that, but I will be covering the online stuff in another video, this is simply the install, so let's just hop right into it. So first up, you're going to need WinRAR or 7-Zip. These are programs capable of zipping and extracting files. I personally have WinRAR, you just click download here, or for 7-Zip, you can download it right here. And once you have one of those installed, you're going to need to get the latest PS3 system software update. So I'll link this in the description down below. You simply want to scroll down. Right now it's on 4.91, last updated February of 2024, but it should be the most recent updated version that this links to. So just scroll down to how to install ps3 software and then you're going to right click this and press save link as and i'm just going to put it on my desktop and press save windows or chrome might try to block it so you just want to press keep you might have to open up your downloads to view it properly and then it will fully download once you have that downloading, you can also go to the rpcs3.net and click download at the top, or you can just click download if you're just straight up on Windows, but you can view all the platforms under the download option, and I'm going to be showing you guys on Windows 10 today, so I'm just going to click download, and you want to save that to your desktop as well. So once you're on your desktop with these two things downloaded now, this one comes in a zip folder. You can right click it and you can press extract to this, which is going to make its own folder for it. If you're on Windows 11, you might actually have to right click and press like show more, something like that. Once you have it extracted, you can delete the original zip as we no longer need that. And now we can open up this folder and inside we have rpcs3.exe. And this is your emulator, so we can simply run it. And now it's gonna pop this up and give you some options. So you can use the dark theme, you can create a, a start menu shortcut, desktop shortcut. I'm gonna create a desktop one. Accept that you've read the kind of guide. And then if you don't want this message to pop up again, click that and we can press continue. And now the emulator has started. So first things first is you're going to need to install that firmware. So you go to file, install firmware, and we want to go to desktop and hit that update file. And then we can just press open and it's going to start installing the firmware there. Now it should only take a few seconds. And there you go, it's fully installed. You might see this window open up and start installing a couple things, so just go ahead and let that run. So once you've got that set up, you can actually hook up a controller to your PC. I plug mine in directly, I have a PS5 controller, and then we can simply head over to pads here at the top, and we can set a different pad per player or controller that's connected to your PC. And for in this regard, I'm going to do the drop down and I am playing on a PS5 controller. So that is DualSense. There's a variety of controllers supported here, including older PlayStation controllers and even Xbox controllers. But I'm going to click DualSense and you can see here in the bottom right, it actually is already detecting my sticks and I'm moving them around and everything is auto mapped for you. If you simply want to change something, just click a button and then click it on your controller of what you want to remap it to. But I'm simply going to press save because I'm the only one on my PC. So next up, I'm going to show you guys some configuration settings that will help with performance and just graphics overall. So, so just head over to configuration here at the top. Let's click CPU. And the only thing we probably want to change here is just click enable SPU loop detection as this could boost performance, but it might affect audio. So just be aware of that and disable it if it ends up happening, though it is pretty rare. So then we can head over to GPU and we're going to keep everything pretty much the same, but make sure your graphics card for your PC is selected right here. And if you want to increase the resolution of the screen in the games, do not change this at the top here. We want to leave that at 720p. But for the bar below it, right here is where you can drag to meet your standard. So I'm just going to go up to 1080p for my 1080p monitor. If you guys are wanting to upscale the games a bit more, feel free to do so, especially if you have a bigger monitor than me. But just keep in mind, if performance starts being affected, you're going to want to kind of lower it back down to normal. But simply come down here, click apply, and click save. So now for installing games on our PCS3, you're going to just put all your PS3 games in a folder. 
put them all in the same folder and then they should be good to go. And once you're ready, you can go into RPCS3, go to file and go to add games. And then you're gonna want to find that folder that you just put all your PS3 games into. So we can click it right here and then just press select folder. And your first time adding games, it might actually ask if you want to add shortcuts or pre-compile caches. I'm just gonna check pre-compile and press okay. So if you're adding a whole bunch of games at once, you might not want to necessarily do this unless you're willing to let them all sort of compile here. For some of your PS3 games, if they're actually package and wrap files, you can simply grab them and drag and drop them into RPCS3 and it will add them in because it will not select them through the folder. This way works also. Now, if one of your PS3 games is an ISO file, like a disk type of file, what you want to do is simply right click it and press open with and go to Windows Explorer. And this will open it up in another Windows Explorer here. And all you got to do is make a new folder for the game so right here I have resistance. So just make your game folder here inside of where you're keeping the rest of your PS3 games for our PCS3. Just open it up and all you got to do is highlight everything that's in the ISO and drag it over into the actual game folder. Once this completes, you can actually right click the ISO file here and then you would be able to eject it, of course, after it's completed. And then you can delete the actual ISO file once this is all done and over with. And then you would simply go to RPCS3 and reselect your game folder and it should add the game to RPCS3. So once you have all your games installed, you can choose how you want to view them. You can change them to grid if you'd prefer or a list. And you can also maximize their size or shrink them down depending how many games you want and how big you want to see them. So next we're going to check for any updates to our game. So we can go up to manage and go over to game patches and you're going to see there's new patches available. Do you want to update? You can press yes. Your patch file is now up to date and we can press OK. Then this patch manager will show all the games and all the updates. So with that said, they've actually added the PS3 interface here. So if we click play on this one. So I just actually learned that this entire XMB screen is pretty much useless right now. It may be actually functional in the future, but for now it's purely cosmetic if you're wanting to experience the classic PS3 kind of screens. So now just to show that everything's working, we should be able to start up Resistance Fall of Man if we just click play or click boot. And once again, Alt and Enter is how you can toggle between full screen or not. So if I click Alt and press Enter, there we go. So here we are playing Resistance Fall of Man, a PS3 game on the PS3 emulator, RPCS3. Here on PC. So if you guys found this guide useful, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe for more, and I'll be sure to make another video showing you guys how to play online and do networking stuff. But once again, thank you all for tuning in, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.